Springboard Roadshow Foundation. Legacy and legacy. Be inspired. Be motivated. Be challenged. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you on the theme, Going Global. While preparing for this uh, delivery by relaxing in my hotel room, I turned on CNN and I found an interesting story. Apparently, a Congolese woman has opened the very first hair styling saloon for African styles in China. She got to China in 1999 because her husband had uh, relocated to China because of job issues. And uh, so she learned the language, took a degree, and didn't really know what to do. But she remembered that some time back, somebody was asking how, how, where they could get their hair done as an African. And so it was an idea that she, 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 she thought about for a long time. And she's now opened this salon in China. It's the first of its kind. Because, and according to her, she has like 3,000 Africans who are her customers. 3,000. And Chinese people are braiding their hair. Chinese people are putting uh, braids in their hair and braiding their hair like Africans. She has Chinese uh, customers from all over the country. They actually uh, take a train in the night and move to Beijing. Get to Beijing in the morning, do their hair, and go back to where they're, where they're coming from. From Canton, from, from Shanghai. And if this is not global, I really don't know what it is. So if there's anybody here who has a skill in braiding hair and you think, oh, me, I can't sing, uh, I can't write, I can't do anything creative. This is a woman who is plaiting hair in China. How many people are there in China? Over a billion. Africans alone, 3,000. She has customers. She has even Chinese girls who are in the saloon. They're braiding their hair. And she's making great money she's taking advantage of an opportunity and she's taking her skill to a different level so going global it is possible this is fresh news when you go back uh, or on your phones just check and check just look for congolese woman opens hair salon in china and it's right there it's brand new fresh news so and i think it was just apt uh, for me to bring this news to you that no matter what talent you have if it is useful and people need it and you love it, it can happen. Number one, start from where you are. Going global, it means it's a journey. You have to start from where you are, okay? Number two, know where you are going. And number three, enjoy the trip. Start from where you are, know where you are going, enjoy the trip. 20 years ago, I graduated from the University of Ghana with a degree in English and French. Now, while I was at the university, when I was in my second year in 1992, an opportunity came for a radio station to be set up on the campus. It was called the SRC Radio, and they were looking for volunteers. Before I came to the university, from the time I was growing up, small boy, I always knew that I was going to be in a field where I would have to stand in front of people and either perform or speak. I knew it. So when this opportunity came, I said, ah, radio station, why not? I haven't done it before, but I think I can, I can sit on the radio station and play music for my friends and get some small fans. So my first experience in radio was as a volunteer at the University of Ghana. Why am I telling you this? This is a job for which I did... Um, Really, out of my own free time, I wasn't getting paid for it, but I enjoyed it. And I meet a lot of people who say, oh, I want to be a TV presenter. Uh, what's the way to go? And I always tell them, uh, start from radio or start from where you are or wherever you are living. The moment you ask me you want to be a TV presenter or a radio presenter, I say, where do you live? If you tell me where you live, I'll ask you, what is the nearest radio station in your area? Go and get a job there. It doesn't have to be on air. You can be a producer. You can be um, an assistant in the newsroom. A radio job is a radio job is a radio job. There are some people who got onto air just because the standard presenter fell sick. And then 
there was an opportunity, they jumped in, they took the job, and that was the end. So, volunteering is good. Most of you I've spoke to at the power mentoring are, are students preparing to go into the wider world. And think about volunteering as a way to move you from local to global. When I finished school, I wrote a hundred letters to every company I could think of. I didn't just say, I want to work in mining, and I targeted only mining. I said, okay, airlines. I listed all the airlines. Boom. Banks. I listed all of them. Boom. Insurance. I, a, hundred, a hundred letters. And I went and posted all of them. Posted all these letters. I was looking for a job. Do you know where, who gave me my first job? A senior who put me under his bed and uh, made me sleep there for like four or five hours. Somebody who made me fan him from like 10 p.m. to dawn. This is my first employer. I shall not mention his name because he says he's a big man. And he might not take too kindly to me disclosing this. But he employed me. How did he employ me? We met at a communication center. Do they still have communication centers in this system? It's, it's, it's gone. It's gone. Because we're in a global area. Now everything is on your phone. You don't need any communication center to do anything for you. We met at a comm center where I had gone to print out a few CVs. And he said, ah, Gavri, so what are you doing? I said, oh, sir, I'm looking for a job. He says, I'm employing. I said, sir, please employ me. He said, do you have your CV? I said, yes. And I gave him my CV. Boom. What does it mean? I was ready. Was I not ready? I had the CVs there. I gave it to him. I was ready. If I wasn't ready, the opportunity would have passed. And I was prepared to start from wherever I was. So in this journey to get from local to global, you must necessarily start from where you are. When Albert gave me the call, I said, Kafui, we need you in Sunyani, or Sunyani needs you to come and speak. Whatever you want to do to take you from local to global, you have to start, first of all, from local. There are people who I talked to in the power mentoring session who said, oh, I want to run my own business. I said, you know what? You start by working for somebody. Start by working for somebody. It gives you experience. You can work for two years, grab the experience, and move. I spoke to Ohima. Ohima wants to go into all kinds of interesting things, and she already has some business experience, and she's smiling there. She has business experience in other fields. She actually ran a spare parts company, which I thought, wow, that's great for her to do whatever she wants to do. And then she finishes school, and she probably will want to work with somebody, starting from where she is, getting some experience, and then you launch. Remember springboard? The board is the local place, where you are. When you spring, hopefully you get to global, like the, chi- the woman in China who is plating hair, for Chinese people and making a lot of money. You understand? So those two stories I have told you should give you an idea of where you are starting from. You start from where you are and then you move forward. Almost every day I get emails or uh, phone calls. I want to be like you. You are my mentor. And I always ask the person, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? The show I currently host, Who Wants to Be Rich?, was started as an idea for a a radio quiz show. And they adapted it from a radio station in the UK to a TV format. And now, Who Wants to Be Rich? is the most popular international franchise TV show in the world. It is in over 100 countries. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's the same show, Who Wants to Be Rich? Over 100 countries in Africa. It's here, it's in Nigeria, it's in Uganda, it's in South, Amer- South Africa. And it all started from one little radio studio in the UK. And what is the grandson of a goldsmith in Ghana doing on a global show like that? I started from where I was, way back, when I started realizing that this is the gift I have, And I started looking for opportunities to develop myself. So I think you need to do the same. No matter what talent you have, you want to start from where you are and build it. If you say you like cooking, go ahead. Cook stuff. Bake it. Give some out. Let people sample it. You never know. You might start a business. You go to the market in your area and identify all these... um, small father mother businesses one man businesses where the bank is in the drawer there and tell them that look you know what i studied accounting 
I want to work on your accounts. I want to prepare your accounts for you. Every month, I'll come by, spend a few hours, prepare your accounts for you. Let's have it that every month we'll have your accounts for you. After one year, we can take 12 nice, simple accounts to the bank and look for a loan for you. Because when you go to the bank, the bank wants to know, ah, what kind of business are you doing? If you are selling yams, how much do you make a day? How much do you make a week? How much do you make a month? If you can show them that, using your accounting knowledge, you can easily make a business out of that. I lie. And you're charging something small, maybe 30 CDs a month. Tell them, oh, you pay me one CD a day. And every, t- every day you make your profits, put one CD down for me. At the end of the month, I'll come and take the 30 CDs. I'll write your accounts for you. After 12 months, you have 12 accounts every month. You can go and show to the bank and say, bank, please, I'm representing Wafayao Spare Parts. He wants 2,000 CDs to expand his business. The bank sees that the business is serious. It is very likely they'll give Wafayao the money. And then Wafayao can also give you a 5% uh, commission for you organizing the loan for him. Is that not how you are using your talents or whatever you have learned in school to make something for yourself? And one day, when you, in 20 years' time, if you become a big accounting firm, that was your story. That was your story. You understand? But these things take time, and you always have to be in the moment. You have to know, where am I now? Because if you know where you are, then you can always decide on where you are going. I'll tell you another story just to illustrate this first point on starting from where you are. When I moved to Kumasi in 1996, I was working with a shipping company as a salesman. And then in 1997, I heard that Capital Radio came to town. So because of my uh, school experience as a broadcaster, I took my application there and said, hey, guys, I want to work here. We went for the audition. I won. I I got selected. And I had to work as a part-time presenter. And with my current job, it was uh, that job at that time, it was 8 to 5. Monday to Friday. But I used to come to Capital before 8 o'clock, do some on-air stuff. Then after work, five onwards, I went and did more stuff. I was getting experience, gathering experience for the day that I would get the Who Wants to Be Rich opportunity. So you've got to always start from where you are to get to where you want to be. And if you want to be global, you've got to be local first. You have to be a champion in your field before you become somebody who is known beyond the shores. You must be a king in your area first. Be a big fish in a small pond. Let the people of Sunyani know that this is what you do. And then from Sunyani, Sunyani you can spread to other parts of the Brown Hanford region. And then before you know, people know about you in Kumasi, and Greater Accra, Eastern. And before you know, you are national. Springboard didn't start the way you see it today. It started very small, seven years ago. And now Springboard has even gone beyond the shores of Ghana. Not only through how we have been ahead because it's on the internet right now on springboard.com.gh or legacy and legacy.com.gh but springboard actually takes the roadshow also to gambia we're in gambia last year it just might end up in the uk this year it might end up in china who knows english is a global language but you always have to start from where you are in your surroundings to get to where you are so whatever skill you have please make use of it it's something that God gave to you. Nobody in this room can tell me that he or she doesn't have any talent. There's nothing that you are good at. It is not possible. Everybody has something that they are good at doing. And you just have to identify it and then spring from that board to go forward. If you're going to go from local to global, you have to prepare. How do you prepare? Your education is very important. Most of you here are students. Take your education seriously. It may not be what you want, but you can use the skills that you have to get to where you want to be. I spoke to one gentleman called Osei, and Osei studied journalism, but he wants to do other things. He wants to produce some very serious show on J-Life radio. And I was telling him, hey, your journalism is actually a benefit because you can actually produce your own show. What do journalists do? They gather facts, they get knowledge, and then they check the facts, make sure everything is correct, and then they bring the stories out. Those are the skills that the producer needs. A producer needs those kind of skills to make sure that what you're putting on your show is sound. So whatever knowledge you have, you can actually use it to get to where you, you are. You love um, um, singing and you love arranging flowers, but you're also doing accounting. Don't drop the accounting. Finish the accounting. The accounting, banking and finance, these are subjects that we need. In any business at all, you need an accountant. You need banking and finance knowledge. Use it 
to develop your talents. And that is what I mean by being aware of your surroundings and then making sure that this, your journey, it starts from where you are and you can get to where you are going to. So that's the first part. Start from where you are. You've got to be prepared for the journey. Number two, know where you are going. Especially if you want to be global, then please, the standard is not Sunyani standard, which may be high. It's not the Ghana standard. It's not the Africa standard. It's the world standard. Global means world. So, you've got to be excellent. No two ways about it. When I was in Capital, we used to do a syndicated show. There was a show called the UK Top 30, which they used to send to us to broadcast on our airwaves. It was a CD. So they would play the CD inside. It was a Top 30 countdown. And after, they would just pack all the CDs aside. A friend of mine called Kosi Asise, who is now the general manager of Capital, we decided to go and pick these CDs and then go and listen to them in the privacy of our homes. Because we really admired the presenter who was on that uh, top 30 countdown. He was called Dr. Fox. And he, the way he spoke, the way he arranged his music, the kind of comments he made, he was a mentor to us. No two ways. So we used to listen to the guy and then make notes on what he was doing. And this was, a, we didn't even know back then because there was no internet. So we couldn't even check. But he, when I checked recently, I found out that Dr. Fox is one big DJ in the UK. So if I meet Dr. Fox one day, I'll say, Dr. Fox, thank you very much. You actually helped me. But then when I think of that statement, I think we helped ourselves because those CDs were there. Nobody saw any value to them. We decided that ah, we can go and listen to this guy and train ourselves. So in whatever you're going to do, if you want to, if you want to get to where you're going, especially if it's global, please, it's got to be high level high level if it's not high level it's not going to work how many of you know uh, a man called sunday mba do you know him sunday do you know him two months ago did you know sunday mba uh-huh now we all know sunday mba what is he famous for for football he scored critical goals he scored the winner against Cote d'Ivoire in the afcon he scored the winner against who bokina in the fa- look Sunday Imba does not play for Tottenham. He doesn't play for Barca. He doesn't play for Manu. He doesn't play for Chelsea. Who does he play for? Worry Wolves. War- Charlie, look at the name. Ha! Name! Do you know where Worry is? Worry is where they have all the confusion in Nigeria with all these uh, militants breaking into pipelines. And cause it's it's a it's a really militant place to be. And out of worry, we have now a global superstar. Everybody knows Sunday in Bar now. And somebody was telling me, Oh, Ghana, we did well. And I said, Hey, buddy, we're not good enough. If we were good enough, we'd have been playing our last game on Sunday, not Saturday. Do you know who plays the Saturday games in Afcon? Eh? If you play your last game on Saturday, what does it mean? The highest you can go to is what? Third position. If you play your last game on Sunday, the highest you can get to is first. Yes. That's it. So you've got to go for excellence. Choose a role model. You don't have to see the person physically. You can read his books. You can check it out on the internet. We're in a global era now. Everything is on the internet. Everything. We have videos on YouTube. You have millions of search results when you go into Google. The, my people that I, I had my power mentee mentorship thing with. We, I had my iPad there. I just went into certain websites information was there. One of them was just nodding and he said, wow, it's all there. It's not even on your phone. It's on your phone now. So you don't have any excuse anymore. If you want to know how to get to the top, just follow the map. If I were driving from Accra, I would have had to consult a map if I hadn't come to Sunyani before. When you are trying to get to the top of your profession, follow the map. The map is the people who have pointed the way already or the people who have pointed the way already, just follow what they are doing. You will get there. It's just a law of, of, of nature. You don't have to be super spiritual. Just follow the rules. So remember, excellence is the key. And don't just follow anybody. Excellence. Excellent. Oh, Ghana, we did well. We didn't do well. Did we do well? We didn't do well. We, the same fourth position we did last time is the same one we've done. We didn't do well. If we down, if you are done well, we would have won that cup. You know? And the funny thing is, when you win, eh, nobody cares about your strategy. If we had won, Coach Apia would have been the best coach in the whole world. Do you know that? 
If we'd won, Coach Apia would have been the best. Yes. So, excellence is the key. Let's get the right role models and follow the right examples to get to the very, 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 very top. Now, who wants to be rich? I know some of you are itching to hear this story. How did I get the job? And, uh, well, when I saw the ad in the paper, I thought, ah, let me go and apply for this. So I applied, and why, what I got an invitation to go and do the interview, I decided to go and research this thing. I went online, and I looked for all, because I knew that this show is all over the world. There are 100 countries, so they're going to have uh, videos of various presenters from various countries. So I went and searched for the American edition, looked at the presenter, looked at how he spoke, looked at what he wore, I went and looked at the New Zealand one. I went and looked at the French one. I went and looked at the Nigerian one. I was looking, and then I, was, I realized that everybody had a certain style. And if I hadn't done that, I would have just come there to the interview, and wouldn't, the people would have seen that, no, this man doesn't even know what he's talking about. He doesn't resonate with what we want, you know? So I applied these principles to myself, and I'm now sitting on that job, and I'm doing it, and I'm loving it, but... I think anybody else could have gotten there if they had followed the formula. You could have, you know. So, follow the formula. Those who have gone ahead and have, have done it, please just... And most times, people who have done well in certain things, when you ask them how to do it, they, they are open. They tell you. They tell you. They are approachable. They, because successful people want other people to also succeed. It puts pressure off them. Imagine in a community you have only one rich man surrounded by a sea of poor people. What will happen to that rich man? Hmm? Every day you'll be getting requests. Eh? Charlie, sort me out. Charlie, I need a small loan for this. But if a second man also becomes rich, then there's a burden increase on that first guy or it lightens. Uh, yeah, and then if more people become wealthy and well off, then you realize that the burdens are lightening. It happens in families too. One person is the only guy who has gone to school and gotten a job. All the pressure is on him, is it not? Yes. But then when he helps other people to go, all things being equal, it's same with people who have done well. They also want you to succeed. Transcend this environment. Get as high as you can. Because up there, there's no competition. You'll be the only plane in the, in the air, enjoying the view, competing with eagles. You know? So, please, it's important. It may sound interesting, but it's true. The higher you go, there's, there's little competition. You understand? So, point two again, know where you are going, follow the map, and learn from those who went ahead. Now, point three, enjoy the trip. In your quest to go global, you want to enjoy the experience. Now, how do you enjoy an experience? You enjoy something if you love what you do, and it is useful to people in your community. It's very important. Whatever you're going to do, please make sure you love it. But beyond you just loving it, you have to make sure that it is useful. I mean, if you enjoy making money, it's great. But if you enjoy making money by selling drugs, then you're not being useful to people. And I'm not talking about codeine or paracetamol. When I say drugs, you know, the powder and all that stuff, illegal stuff. You're killing people's families and enjoying. No. If you're an accounting student, I gave you the example. And you can help people to organize their accounts. You are helping them. They are paying you. You are doing what you know and you love. What more could there be? I don't know what your talents are. I don't know what skills you are, what um, educational backgrounds you have. But in the quest to go from local to global, it is important that you even enjoy what you're doing. It doesn't even feel like a job anymore. I mean, 20 years ago, I think uh, Lionel Messi was probably still in Argentina, the Barca player. He's now spent more than half of his life in Barcelona. And I get the feeling just looking at him that this is a man, even if you didn't pay him even one euro, he would still play football. Don't you think so? Yes, just from the joy he gets from dribbling defenders and making them look silly, he would do it. Another player that I really enjoy is Ronaldinho. I have never seen that guy play football without smiling. You know, he's doing these outrageous things and he's just enjoying himself, you know. Fatal Dauda, you saw him in the post with his vampire moves, you know. <laughs> He was just having fun. He was having fun. Enjoying himself. You know? And now we know his name. Me, one month ago, I didn't know who Fatah was. You know? But he, got, he, he achieved a certain level of global recognition because the AFCON is a global com uh, competition. 
And you could see that he was enjoying himself. So it's very important that whatever you do, do it in such a way that um, you enjoy it. Right now, when somebody asks me, what do you do? I say, well, I'm in the speaking business. And it covers so many things. I host a TV show, so that's one part of speaking. I train people to be better public speakers. That's another part of speaking. I MC events. I did the convocation. God willing, I'll do the one in Kumasi at the end. That's another part of my business. And I'm enjoying it. It's just good fun. Sometimes when I get the check, I, I look at the check and I just laugh. Ah, I just get to have fun on this stage and people are actually pay me all this money. It's great. You know, I, I just, I'm just so excited. I don't feel like I've gone to work. You know, but I'm working. But you can work and actually enjoy it. You understand? And those are the things. When you, once you are enjoying the view, different things happen. I mean, when I started out as a TV presenter, I never knew that one day I'd be doing a show like Springboard. Or I never knew that I'd be emceeing events. I never knew I'd be teaching people. But I realized that these are the things that I like to do. Because I remember when I was in university 30 years, 20 years ago, I told myself that one day I'll be a teacher. I was thinking that I was going to be an academic teacher. But now when I have my class of public students, public speaking students in front of me, I realize that, ah, Kaf, you are, you are teaching here. The, thi- oh, the things that you wanted are happening. So, so enjoy the view. And once you get to enjoy it, opportunities open up for you to do different things. Albert and, and Comfort didn't actually start out with Springboard. It started out as combat impressions, printing books, publishing books. And now they've gone into so many different things. They are enjoying the view. They've gone from local... They're definitely global now. And they're enjoying the view. They're having good fun. He comes on the stage. He'll come on the stage. You see him smiling. He's working. But he's having fun. You understand? It's really important. If you don't enjoy it, it will feel like prison. You know, that's why people say, oh, I hate Mondays. I mean, I, I, every day is a great day for me. I love Mondays. Uh, if I'm going to empty some event on Monday, why wouldn't I love it? If you can make sure that I can, I can get a check and then I can take the wife out to, to go and enjoy ourselves more. I can take the kids out to go and have a good time. It's helping me. It's helping other people. Of course, it's going to be something that I really enjoy doing. So make sure that when you're on this journey from going local to global, you enjoy the view. Use all the technology that's available. We have so many. There's Facebook. There's LinkedIn. There's YouTube. There's Google. So don't just go and paste bowls of fufu and, and a crantier and say, look what I had for breakfast. You know, you know. <laughs> That is taking you nowhere. Unless, of course, you have some wild chop bar somewhere and you are advertising your menu, then that makes sense. But if you don't have a chop bar, I mean, and or a restaurant, why do you want us to know what you had for lunch? You know, Korean beans. You know, I, I've seen all kinds of interesting things on people's uh, Facebook pages. So you want to use the, your, the technology to make sure that you are going from local to global. You know where you are. You know where you are going. You are enjoying the view. Sometimes to make it big, you have to start small. Remember the story of Sunday Mba, Wari Wolves, oh, from Wari Wolves to Champions of Africa. I think this year they are going to Brazil to go and play the Confederations Cup because they are going to play the, the champ- champions of Europe, the champions of Asia, the champions of South America. And it's just by performing, now we know the man's name. You know, so sometimes to make it big, to make it global, you have to start small. It doesn't matter who you are. There's somebody here who probably thinks he's anonymous. But in 20 years' time, you want people to know who you are. Don't you? Don't you want people to know who you are for whatever you have done? Don't you? If you want people... I don't see the vim. Do you want people to know who you are? You, when they mention your name and I say, ah, Vivian or say they should know who you are and it's possible all you have to do is get started and the rest will be history I thank you very much